You know, in the last two episodes, I really realized how close we're coming to actually finishing this park. And I know I've said this before, um, but I still didn't realize it myself how much of a difference that one episode of doing foliage makes to actually making the ride look so much more finished. And now I think I'm not even going to make episode 69 with just this park. And I'm still thinking about what I'm going to do for the next park because there are a couple of ideas which I kind of want to um, do. Of course, there's that one idea that I was going to make an Asian themed park, but I don't think that's going to happen in the end because one park with just one theme, which is kind of what happened in this park, is usually not the best idea for a really big park. Even Verona Valley had some, um, although they were all on the same timeline, it had some different areas with slightly different themes, and there are still slight differences in this one too. And what I might want to try is, the thing I've talked about before is that I open multiple parks, and in each park I'm gonna build a park with one theme, and then combine all of those parks and just, um, yeah, well, basically, assume that's one park. That's uh, what we're all just going to imagine then. But I don't know if I really want to do that, because one idea which I've had for many years, and some p other people have tried too, but I don't think it's ever really um, been a huge success, is to try and make a floating park. And I'm actually serious about this, because, I don't know, it, it's, it's always been an idea that really appeal to me, but I never really did it because it's just undoable. It's really hard to do that. The idea is you've got a couple of floating islands, preferably up in the sky or something like that, above the clouds, if you will, and that's where you place all the rides on, and you have like bridges in between the floating islands, and they're basically made out of big rocks, and only the surface on top is used to actually build rides on. I know, it really seems like something I want to try, and I think it would look really great, but it's, it's kind of hard to pull off. So I'm kind of debating whether I should try that for my newest park or just a regular, normal, on Earth and uh, quote-unquote realistic park. And I don't know which of the two I'm going to do. And the thing is, though, if I'm not going to make that floating park, I definitely do want to make a floating roller coaster because I just want to, I just want to do that sometime. It's really an amazing thing. But anyway, um, I need to talk about what I'm doing right now. I finished... I uh, What? No, I didn't finish anything. What am I talking about? I decided to add foliage to this ride. Not because I think it's finished quite yet. It could use uh, more details. Uh, now, you might be thinking, more details? Aren't there enough details for you already? And the simple answer to that is no. Uh, the longer answer to that is... Yeah. Yeah, sure, but... Not quite as many as I would have liked, you know. Uh, there's something with just scattering the ground with random boxes and chests and barrels and oil drums that nobody really appreciates, but then again, it looks really awesome. And it just... I don't know, it's, it's kind of stupid sometimes. This is the kind of theme where you built the buildings and you built the foliage and you built the rides, but that's not everything. You need to build random shit as well. So, placing random chests and barrels might be um, an annoyance sometimes. It's still cool to do, and it still does make the entire thing look better, so that's definitely something that I still need to do. But that's after I do all this foliage work, of course, and this rock work to cover up this, these awkward edges of this pond. You know, this has always been a problem for me because every time I make a pond or something similar, I, up comes the debate of whether you should lower the water level 1H or whether you should just keep it the same height as the surface. Um, the advantage to this is that the water is not going to be quite as far away or as, um, yeah, well, yeah, you're not going to have like 1H cliff faces, which is not something you'd really want to have with a pond. And that fountain was absolutely terrible. But if you don't kind of sink it in, then you get these awkward edges, which you're going to have to cover with rockwork. Oh well. Rockwork's kind of good at that. I think there are many things in this park that really sucks. That just need to be covered up by rocks. Because seriously, rocks are good at that. 
extremely good. If you have a ride, and there are some paths, and there's like terraforming, and you know paths and terraforming, they don't go very well together, and uh, you get like these awkward cliff faces, and you don't want that. Uh, rock work, you can cover it up with rock work. If you have some awkward um, waterfront, and you know the water's kind of like meh, and, and, and like the, the side of the lake is not really smooth or anything, rock, rock work, just cover it up with the rocks. That's basically the solution to every landscaping thing that doesn't look really good, you can just place rocks on it. The same goes for foliage though, when it comes to rocks. If you've got a rock, and it doesn't look that good, and you're like, this looked different in my head, looked a lot better in my head, but now that I've placed the rocks, it looks like shit. You can just cover it with foliage. Um, if your foliage is not good, on the other hand, you're gonna have a bit of a problem. And that's why foliage is also very important. I mean, foliage just makes everything more clean, it, um, divides areas, it can fill up the emptiness where you need to do that, it can fill up the ugliness with beautifulness if you really need to do that, and that's why I love foliage. Though, these things are really amazing, these like, little grass things. I mean, we don't have actual grass in Rollercoaster Tycoon 3 for many reasons, people have actually, um, built many custom scenery sets for grass, but I don't think any of the sets really came out of a beta. I know that some people do have some beta sets of grass sets, but never really worked and they don't really use it, because it's, it either doesn't look very realistic, it'll never be the No Limits grass, or um, the real life grass of course, but it is also often way too high poly. I mean, these small little grass patches already create a huge amount of lags, uh, <laughs> lags, noise. And, actually, as you may know, I've got an NVIDIA GTX 970 video card, which is ridiculously high. Uh, it's one of the newer uh, graphics cards out there, and one of the best, best graphics cards on the market. And I zoomed out on this park and I got 7 frames per second, with um, 8 gigs of RAM. So, yeah, Rollercoaster Good 3, you're great. Um, I can actually get 800 FPS on Minecraft, but... Yeah, so basically, Rollercoaster Second 3 likes 100 times more than Minecraft. And that is great. That is absolutely fantastic. Oh well, it, it probably still runs better than Call of Duty Ghosts. Though, it might not. That would be extremely terrible. You know what? You know what I do realize, though? The more you look at this foliage, it's very diverse. And it's way more diverse than any foliage in real life would be. Seriously, and perhaps Rollercoaster Second 3 is kind of like, um, I don't know, I don't want to quote a Clockwork Orange, but um, they were talking about how on video everything looks more realistic than in real, and I think in Rollercoaster Second 3 it's the same story with foliage, it's like, Rollercoaster Second 3 foliage only actually looks real if you exaggerate it, if you make it much more ridiculous than real life foliage, because in real life, you just have a couple of trees and boring trees around the ride, with some boring ferns, and nothing is actually interesting, and there are no flowers or different colors, it's all just meh. But then in Rollercoaster Second 3, you place all of these different trees, and only then will it look realistic. If you if you actually do the realistic thing, and place the same old tree over and over again throughout the park, which is more realistic, or at least, um, on a small scale, it just looks less realistic in Rollercoaster Second 3. And I suppose that's something to keep in mind, that sometimes over the top is actually better than ultra realism, and actually looks more realistic, and of course more beautiful. Um, I don't know, is there, such a th is there such a thing as detail overkill? I think it depends on what theme you're working with, but in general I'd rather have detail overkill than well, barely any detail. But that's just my opinion on that matter. Um, in the next episode, I'm going to work on this small little um, CFR ride, which I've called the Wiggly Wobbler for now, but that's definitely not going to be the name. So, see you then!